What up? So uh, I got this message from uh, Duct Tape Ninjas. Uh, Randall, I love the half-assed prototype. Oh, and by the way, I don't care if you cuss in my comments. You're free to uh, use all the profanity you want. Or the Rask. Uh, where can I find the spec slash diagram to build the audio audio trigger circuit that you are using. There's a gap between this and your 18 mega board video you made. Well, the reason there's a gap is because there's a gap in my schematics between those two uh, <laughs> videos. So this morning I uh, drew up the schematic and I'm going to put it on my website, uh, hern.com. And uh, if you, uh, the link of the schematic will be in the description below. But basically, this, it works great. The only problem with it is you must have the iPod on 100% volume. And if it's one notch off 100%, it will not work. But as long as you have it on 100% volume, it will work. And uh, I uh, laid out this circuit. And uh, you're free to modify this circuit. And if you somehow know how to uh, get this circuit to uh, accept lower, you know, volume, lower volume from the iPod and still work, uh, please, please show me and uh, you know repost it. But uh, if you do use this circuit, uh, please ask that you give me credits. I have a website, uh, or just linking to my YouTube page will be fine. But this is what I did. Uh, I used an opto isolator and I only used uh, all these parts or parts I had on hand so that's how I got the resistor values I kind of half-ass calculated it <laughs> but uh, I used the opto isolator and a transistor and uh, basically is an NPN transistor the audio goes into the base of the transistor and uh, and it goes through a 39 ohm resistor. I calculated 39 ohms because I was searching around on the internet and I read someone posted how many uh, milliwatts the iPod can support. And of course you don't want to blow out your iPod speaker. So I used 39 ohms and I forget what the milliwatts was or what the calculation I used. But uh, so far it appears that it hasn't damaged my iPod. But uh, results are not guaranteed. <laughs> So uh, 39 ohm resistor to the base of the NPN transistor and that transistor is switching on and off the LED inside the opto isolator. Um, so it switches this LED and then this current limiting resistor 100 ohm for the LED. And then uh, on the transistor side of the opto isolator, uh, base is floating. Uh, I've read somewhere that people like to tie their base. Uh, but when I set up the circuit, I just left it floating and it has worked fine ever since. So uh, I use a thousand ohm resistor to the collector of the opto isolator. And uh, the emitter gets tied to ground. Now the pin going to the microcontroller is between the collector and the thousand ohm resistor. And that it's going to an external interrupt pin on the microcontroller. And I have that external interrupt pin to trigger an interrupt on the uh, falling edge of the clock. So basically, in Audacity, I'm creating a square wave. But you know when you put it into uh, the iPod, it's not going to come out. You know, if there was no uh, compression involved, the iPod would release a one volt square wave, which is something I would be able to work with. But because of compression, it turns it into a sine wave. And unfortunately, I, I don't have an oscilloscope. And it's times like these I really wish I had an oscilloscope because I have no idea what it looks like when it leaves the iPod. But I put this together with the transistor and opto isolator. I originally started with just the opto isolator and it, it was working, It was, but it wasn't working that good. So I switched to putting the trans resistor on it. I already tried to get rid of the opto isolator and just use the transistor. That didn't work. But uh, I put the putting these components together seems to work great. It never, as long as the volume's on 100%, it never misses a uh, clock. But uh, anyway, this goes to external interrupt, and I have it on the downward edge 
however you want to use it but on, on mine I have it on the falling edge it goes and triggers the interrupt to uh, add one to the clock to keep everything in sync on the microcontroller so uh, that's pretty much it uh, like I said if you know how to somehow amplify it even more that it will work on less than 100% volume but uh, it's this is working fine with me obviously the other side of the audio that actually contains the music the 100% volume does not uh, matter to me because uh, I'll be putting it into an amp anyway and usually when you run stuff through the amp you always want to have everything 100% till the very last volume control so but you know if you want to just mess around with headphones or something that can be a pain but like I said uh, this works great if you use it I just ask that you uh, credit me somehow and if you modify it uh, just inform me because this is what uh, about open sharing is all about uh, you know you put your stuff out there and people will go take it modified and a lot of times make it a lot better than what you had it so uh, that's what open sharing is all about so uh, duct tape ninja yeah duct tape ninja or Duck Ninja Tape is their username. Uh, here you go. I hope you enjoy.